It's about that time, everybody. It's about that time. Let me make sure we live everywhere. We are live on Periscope. It's active. Make sure Instagram is active. Instagram is active. We are live there. Facebook is active. So we live on three platforms at the same time right now. As y'all are checking in, I'm going to give everybody like 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds to check in. Then we're going to get into uh, the material that we need to get into here today. So as y'all checking in, shout yourself out in the comments section. Let me know who you are. Stand up and be accounted for. If you don't know who I am, I'm going to introduce myself in a minute. But we're going to get started in, like I said, 30 to 60 seconds. So as y'all are checking in, go ahead and shout yourself out in the comments section. Again, 30, 60, 30, 60 seconds. We're going to get started. It is first night of the NBA Finals. We're going to get into that. Uh, no, not today, but we'll get into it tonight when I make a video uh, reviewing the finals game. But since we had the presidential debates yesterday, we're going to talk about this a little bit different, a uh, little bit different angle than what some of you may expect. If you know my material, then you know I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you something good. I'm going to give you some food here. So again, shout stuff out in the comment section. We're going to get started in this in a minute. Let me make sure we are live on Facebook. I think we live. Yeah, we live on Facebook. Facebook, shout stuff out in the comment section. Tell me where you checking in from. Uh, Periscope, shout stuff out in the comment section. Tell me your name, where you from. Instagram, y'all know if you've been on here, shout this out as shout stuff out as well. Pineapple Diesel said the Lakers said the Lakers going win. Uh, that's all right. It's good to feel that way. Here's what we talking about here today. For those of you who don't know me, first of all, my name is Dre Baldwin. Many know me as Dre all day. I'm a former nine year professional athlete and author of 27 books. I've done four TED talks. I'm telling you that because I've been in this game for a minute. And what I have done, I created this whole philosophy, this framework. This business is brand that is called work on your game. It's all about taking the mentality necessary to succeed in sports and teaching how those same tools apply in business and in life. So oh, it was your birthday today. Shout out to Saleh. It's your birthday. How old are you, Saleh? We'll shout you out. Everybody is y'all checking in. Anyway, as I already told y'all what I do and what I've done and why I'm talking about uh, this philosophy, work on your game. What I'm talking about here today is my plan for black America in 2020. I.e., since we had the presidential elections just start, not elections, debates pop off yesterday. And always in these debates, or at least in the lead up, when people are, uh, what's the word, uh, campaigning to win an election, they get asked by some prominent black person, they say, What's your plan for black America? Or some black person will say, Well, any politician that we vote for, they got to have a plan for black people. What's the plan for black people? And every four years, somebody comes around, they say, well, here's my plan for black people. And then whichever one sells better about a plan for black people, that's the one that gets the quote unquote black vote. Usually goes to Democrats. We all know this. But over the years, that started to loosen up a little bit as people have gotten more information and they're starting to, the curtain's starting to get pulled back on certain things. But all that being said, I listened to and watched the presidential debate last night, and there were a couple questions about black people yesterday, which I think is something that they had to they had to do because it's drawing a lot of attention right now, especially the you know the woke slash anti Trump side of things. And the, one of the questions was, "What's your plan for Black America? Do you uh, represent or do you agree with Black Lives Matter movement?" Uh, what do you think about defunding the police? Questions like that were asked. And, of course, Biden tries to push on the things that he's saying that he's going to do this and that. And listen, I don't have a dog in this race politically. I don't really care who wins. And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, we had Obama as president for eight years. He allegedly had a plan for black people. And black people are still complaining. Black people still got problems. Black people still have not you know, done for self enough, even though Obama was in office for eight years. So, obviously... I think that should be a clear sign that whoever the president is, is not really the answer to what black people need. So today, what I'm going to give you, I'm not running for president, but I'm going to give you the plan for black America. So if black Americans want to know what needs to be done for black people to progress and move forward and uh, leave the problems of the past behind, I'm going to cover that here in this presentation right now. And if you are not black, don't turn this off. Keep listening. Because you need to understand, when you hear black people talking, if they're not echoing the points that I'm laying out here in this plan, the things that they're talking about sound like the opposite of the things that I'm talking about here in this plan, then you know you're listening to a black person who is full of shit. And the reason why they are saying the things that they're saying because they have an audience of people who are sheep, who don't listen and don't think and are lazy, and they're just going to take whatever they hear from this person because, I don't know, because they play the sport because they have followers, because they, it sounds good, because it is absolving them of responsibility and accountability. All that being said, let's get right into this. What is my 2020 election plan for black America? If I was running 
for office and a black person said to me or black people in general said, Dre, what is your plan for black America? What, what plan do you have for black people? How are you going to help black people out? If you want our vote, you got to have something for us. What's your answer to that, Mr. Baldwin? The answer is as follows. Point number one, you can vote for whoever you want. All right, this is my first point. For anyone, the black plan for America in 2020, I don't care if you vote for Joe Biden. I don't care if you vote for Donald Trump. I don't care if you do a write-in vote for Kanye West. You can vote for whoever you want in the 2020 election because, as I just made clear, whoever the president is has nothing to do with whether black people are going to move forward or move backward. At least not nowadays. It doesn't matter. Maybe maybe 100 years ago, it might have mattered. Maybe 200 years ago, it mattered. It does not matter right now. Whoever the president is, it doesn't matter. Donald Trump is the president. Black people can still move forward or they can move backward. If Biden is the president, black people can move forward or they can move backward. It has nothing to do with who the president is. So I want to make sure I'm getting that clear off the top. It is not about who the politician is because Joe Biden and Donald Trump, last time I checked, both of them are old white men. We had a young black guy, Barack Obama, at least relatively speaking, relatively young black guy as president for eight years. What did black people, how did black people progress? Black people didn't get better. Black people didn't get rid of oppression and systemic racism and white privilege in the eight years that we had a black man in the White House. Then obviously having a black man or whoever is in the White House has nothing to do with the progress or the regression of black people. All right. That is the argument that I'm making. All right. That's the logical uh, background for why I'm saying what I'm saying. You can vote for whoever you want. Doesn't matter who you choose. Neither one of them, neither Donald Trump or Joe Biden is running on a platform of we're going to do something for black America. Joe Biden ain't going to do shit for black America. Donald Trump, whatever he's already done for black America, that's pretty much what he's going to do. He announced a, a platinum plan maybe a week or so ago. And he talked about how he had uh, unemployment was down and then the, the pandemic hit. So everything's kind of all skewed now because of the pandemic. But if you think Trump is doing a good job for black people, vote for him. You think Trump is racist, you think he's terrible, vote for the other guy. doesn't matter. Neither one of them is going to be focused on what black people need or doing anything for black people. So if you think that your vote has anything to do with one of them doing something for black people, you have been brainwashed by, I don't know, probably by social media and the mainstream media. Allow me to unbrainwash you. Allow me to rinse your brain. Neither one of these candidates is going to do a damn thing for black people. So you could do close your eyes, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, pick somebody. Doesn't matter. All right. You can't still be falling for that in 2020. All right. Wake up. Point number two. The topic here today is my plan for black America. If I was running for election, babe, I got to take that downstairs. My plan for black America, if I was running for election in 2020, January 20th, 1961, John F. Kennedy made a speech. He made his inauguration speech when he was elected as president. And he made the following statement. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Now, what I'm telling the black people with this right here is not that you as a black person needs to do something for America, but I'm telling you what you need to do as black people. Do not ask what any politician, a black politician or a white politician will do for you. Ask yourself what you, you personally, as a black man or a black woman will do to uplift the community. This is the question that black people need to ask. If I was running for election as a politician and black people, a bunch of black people in the crowd say, what's your plan for black people if we elect you? This is one of the things that I would say. Do not ask me what I'm going to do for you, but ask yourself, what are you going to do to uplift your own community? Now, I would not win the election because I made this statement because a bunch of black people would be mad that I'm giving them personal accountability. And this is why I'm not a politician. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right here, right now for y'all. So the question that black people need to ask, and any of you who's not black, note that I posted this, that I posed this question. This is the question that black people need to ask because every other community that is rising and progressing and doing well and not complaining about anything, and they are you know, doing for self and taking care of their own business, not focusing on what everybody else is doing, they all have already asked themselves this question internally, and they are answering it with their actions every single day. Asians are doing this, Latins are doing this, white people are doing this, Jewish people are doing this, Catholics are doing this, whatever, whatever group you want to name that is progressing and doing well, they are doing this for themselves. They ask themselves, what can I do personally to uplift my own internal community? And then when our community is good, then we can help other people out for a price. But first, we got to help ourselves out. Black people have been, for whatever reason, 
for whatever reason, there are many reasons, we're not going to get into all of them, but for whatever reason have been kind of brainwashed into thinking that the problems of black people have something to do with the government, the president, the police, or white people, uh, systemic oppression, racism, uh, slavery from whatever, 100, 200 years ago, whatever the situation is. Never do I hear a black person, a prominent black person say the biggest challenge that black people have is that we need to hold ourselves accountable and we need to put ourselves in position to do for ourselves. I don't hear any prominent black person saying that. I don't hear any rapper saying it. I don't hear any NBA player saying it. I didn't see nobody in the WNBA say it. No NFL player said it. I don't hear AOC or Jamel Hill or any of the uh, Mark, what's the dude's name? I can't even remember the dude's name. Mark Lamont Hill, any of these people who is, or Sean King, he ain't even black, or any of these people who is supposed, supposedly a leader of black people. I heard any of them saying these things. The closest person that ever came to saying it was Obama during his time, but Obama, well, he softened it so much that people didn't really hear it. Uh, he didn't say it in a hard enough way that people really got it. I'm saying it in a direct way. The biggest challenge that black people have is looking outside of the black community for help for the black community. Asian people look at themselves. This is why Asian people perform at a high level. Uh, even white people, and white people is a huge group of people, but different pockets of them, different religions, different races, different nationalities. When they come to America, they get together, they help themselves out first. They help their internal community. Then if there's time and resources remaining after that, then they go help everybody else out. But if it ain't none left, then so be it. They just help themselves out. This is what every community that thrives does. And this is what people in businesses do. This is what individual people do. Any of you right now, you could be black. If you are successful, it's because you focus on what you need to do for yourself. Then, when you're done with that, then you go do things to help other people out. But you're not focusing your business on what does anybody else got to do for me? What do, what do you owe me? What do they owe me? How have they done me wrong? How has this group oppressed me? This is what black people have, for whatever reason, have been brainwashed into this. Okay, This is why I am not a supporter of Black Lives Matter, of the Black Lives Matter movement. If anybody wants to know, I've been on the record saying this before, but I'll say it again. I'm not a supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement because Black Lives Matter only steps up when there is a white person to blame. All right? I never hear any Black Lives Matter leader holding any black person accountable for anything they only talk about what the white person did what the white man is doing what the government is doing how we need to replace this person how we need to go vote out this person and vote in this other white person that's all i ever hear any black lives matter or any social justice warrior ever saying they talk about how someone other than a black person is responsible for the problems of any individual or as a group black people and there is no personal accountability there's no group accountability there's no responsibility there's no ownership there's no looking inward everything is pointing outward and no group has ever 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 progressed and gotten to a high level of achievement by focusing all of their energy outward on what everybody else is doing or what everybody else has done or what everybody else needs to do for them so black people the only way the black race in america is going to move forward as a group now individuals can move forward the only way the group is going to move forward is when there is a group mindset of we need to look at ourselves and figure out what we need to do to improve our own we need to look at our own shit we need to clean up our own house it's like going to somebody's house and telling them how their house is dirty but your house ain't even clean you ain't even wash the dishes you haven't done laundry is, is dirt all over the floor you need to dust your furniture you ain't got no food in the refrigerator but you're talking about somebody else's house black people we don't have our own houses together therefore therefore we can't get our own we can't get what we want we can't do what we need to do for ourselves when we're focusing on everybody else this is a, a big challenge with black people this is why i do not fuck with the sean kings the tamika mallory's the jamel hills all these people who are allegedly spokespeople for black folks but they never talk about what a black person needs to do unless they're kind of joking about it. But they get all high and mighty when there's a white person that they can attack. And they get on social media and attack Donald Trump, which isn't even unique anymore. It's not unique to attack Donald Trump on social media. Everybody does that. You get no points for that now. It's, it's just a, a common thing. Do, find a new act. Point number three. Today's topic. Oh, yeah. Another reason why people don't hold black people accountable because you can't get any points on that. Now, you can't get any points on social media. I'm saying black people need to hold themselves accountable. You say that on social media, it's going to be crickets. Or it's going to be quiet. Nobody's going to say anything. If you get on social media and you start trashing Donald Trump or trashing white people or trashing white privilege, you're going to get a whole audience of people that just want to hear all of that. Why is that? Because it's passive. To attack 
if you're black and you say the biggest problem for black people is white people, everybody's going to love it because it's passive. There's no responsibility in saying it. All you got to do is say it. And now all the problem is them. They got to do something for us. But if you say the biggest problem for us black people is we need to do for self, a bunch of black people don't want to hear that shit because that requires them to do work. And they don't want to do work. And this is why we're in the situation that we're in. Point number three. I got four points here. This is my plan. Four point plan for black America. If I was running for president, this would be my plan for black people. If Charlemagne asked me, Dre, what is your plan for black America? If you want the black vote, you got to have a plan for black America. All right, Charlemagne, here's my plan. Point number three. Make the game easier for those who are building a community. And listen very carefully to what I'm going to explain in this point. The third point is black people need to make the game easier for black people who are building the community. In life, there is no neutral, ladies and gentlemen. There is no neutral in life. You cannot stay neutral. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. When you're taking action, you're either building or destroying. Every thought that you have, every word that you speak, you're either building or or destroying. All right, there is no in between. There is no neutral. Everybody got that. Here's what I want you to understand when I say make the game easier for those who are building. Just last or last week, New York Times put out a, a report, you know, a quote unquote report with a bunch of anonymous sources that said Donald Trump didn't pay that much in taxes. They said he paid $750 in taxes the year that he won the election. And they put it out. If y'all don't know, New York Times is very, very liberal and they're very anti Donald Trump. So everything they put out that says anything about Trump is somehow, some way, making him look bad, right? Or at least trying to. So they put this out, and Donald Trump didn't pay taxes. That's the story that they wanted everybody to see. Here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about taxes. The very point of the tax system, if you're a citizen, is to pay as little in taxes as possible. All right, that's the point. So they said Donald Trump didn't pay that much in tax, as if he cheated the system or something like that. If he cheated the system, he'd be in jail. All right, so their whole report came out that said he cheated the system or at least it made it they implied that he cheated the system by not paying his quote-unquote fair share in taxes well why is he still a free man the irs could have arrested him already if that was the case donald trump paid so little in taxes and he probably has paid very little in taxes all of his life just like steve jobs probably paid very little uh what's the guy richard branson i don't think he lives in america but he wouldn't pay that much in taxes at least in the american tax system warren buffett probably doesn't pay that much in taxes at least based on the amount of money that he makes bill gates probably doesn't pay that much a lot of business owners people who are very well-known business owners and entrepreneurs do not pay a lot of money in taxes you know why for several reasons number one when you own a business you get taxed you have so many more tax breaks than an employee has employees have the worst they're in the worst tax bracket it is not even about how much you make it's just the percentage that gets taken out of your check when you're an employee all that money the government takes straight out of your check any of you who's an employee you know when you get your paycheck you get the pay stub i don't know what they do these days maybe they send you an email and you look at the deductions that get taken out they're taking 40 percent of your money off the top before you even get a chance to see a dollar and that's why you get a refund after the year that's your money give it, being given back to you people get excited about a tax refund it's your money. Now, that was money that you earned in the first place. Now, just giving it back to you all in one lump sum if you just count it. Understand something about the tax system and the government and the creators. The reason why business owners, many of you never read Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, where he explained the cash flow quadrant. You have the employees, you have the self employed, then you have the entrepreneurs, and you have the investors. There are two different sides. The employees and the self employed get taxed the most. They pay the most in taxes. The government takes the most money from these people, even after we factor in your, your refund, because you are not creating anything. All right, the only person that you are getting a job for is yourself. You are is one of you, and there's one job for you. A self-employed person is a person who works and is just them. An employee is a person who just works. All right, you ain't give nobody a job. An entrepreneur creates jobs for other people, and an investor is investing in businesses that create jobs for other people. That's why they get taxed less. They get all these tax breaks because the government wants entrepreneurs and investors to continue to build businesses. Why is this? Because when an entrepreneur or an investor invests in and builds a business, what happens is more employees get jobs and the government can tax the shit out of the employees and take all of their money. They take all the employees' money. They don't take the owner's money or the entrepreneur's or the investor's money. They take the employee money. That's why they give breaks to the owners. Donald Trump is a business owner. He creates businesses. He's an investor. So, of course, he doesn't pay that much in taxes. That's the whole point. Are right, any of you have an accountant? Any of you ever talked to an accountant? Any of you ever did your taxes via TurboTax? All they do is show you more and more ways to save money on your tax bill. That's the whole game is to pay as little as possible in taxes. I'm telling you all that to tell you this. 
The government gives breaks to the business owners and the investors because they are creating, they are uplifting, they are bringing something new to the economy. Y'all know when presidents run for it, uh, for their campaigns or they're up for re-election like Trump is right now, what do they talk about when they talk about the economy? They talk about new jobs and talk about how they lowered unemployment. That's all they ever do. I created this many new jobs and unemployment is at its lowest rate in five years, ten years, ever, right? How does unemployment go down? By people getting jobs. How do people get jobs? By somebody creating a company and hiring people and an investor investing in that business so they can hire people. That is what, that's, the government loves this. Presidents love when people create jobs because creating jobs makes the president look good and they can use that to show off their record and show that they're helping the economy. What does this have to do with black people? Who in the black community, this is a question, a rhetorical question, but you can answer it yourself. Who in the black community is building the community? Who in the black community is either A, creating jobs for other black people, or B, doing things to make black people more hireable? These are the two things that are building the community. I'm going to say them one more time. These are, these are the things that we need to focus on as black people in the community. Two things. Number one, who is creating jobs for black people? Or number two, who is doing things that makes black people more hireable, meaning it, helping them increase their skills, working on their game, building human capital. The human capital are knowledge, skills, relationships, abilities, talents, uh, loyalty, uh, discipline, showing up every single day, dependability. All of these are human capital. They can be tangible or intangible. If you're doing something as a black person to build human capital and other black people, you are building the community because you're making everyone in the community more valuable. If you are giving jobs to black people, you are building the community because now you took a person who didn't have a job, now they do have a job. Now they can get a check, they can take care of their family, and the government can get a piece of that. A nice size piece of it, but a piece of it. All right, those are the two types of people that black people need to make things easier for. The same way the government makes things easier for entrepreneurs and investors, black people need to make things easier for business owners who are creating jobs and people who are building the community. As I told you, in life you either build or destroy. Those who are building should be getting more breaks than just regular people who are just running around doing absolutely nothing. And point number four, this will be the other side to that point that I just gave. As I said, in life you either build or destroy. My topic here today is my plan for black America. If I was running for president, they wouldn't hire me. They wouldn't vote for me because I'm holding black people accountable. Black people seem to be allergic to accountability these days, but I'm going to make this point anyway so it's on the record. Number four, we got to have a system of relegation. You don't know what relegation is. In professional sports overseas, at the end of the season, the worst teams in the league get kicked out of the top league. They got to go down to the lower league. And the best teams from the lower league, they get to come up and play in the top league. In other words, let's say we had the, N the NBA and the G League. The worst teams in the NBA this year, let's say the two worst teams in the NBA, get kicked out of the NBA. They got to go play in the G League. And then the two best teams in the G League, they get to come play in the NBA. That's not exactly how it will work in basketball in the USA because of the system. But y'all understand what I'm saying. That's relegation. Whoever's the worst gets kicked out. And whoever's the best at the lower level, they get to move up. We need a system of relegation in the black community. What I mean is this. Since I told you in life you're either building or destroying, those who are not building, those who are destroying the community, we got to get rid of them. We got to evict them out of the system. We got to evict them out of the community. Stop supporting them. Stop uh, trying to help them out. Stop trying to give them opportunities. Stop trying to lift them up because they don't want to be lifted up. Not everybody in life wants to be lifted up. Not everybody wants to get better. Not everyone wants to work on their game. Not everyone's trying to improve. Not everyone's trying to build. Not everyone's trying to contribute. You got to let those people go. You got to get rid of them. There's this movie called Lean On Me. This came out probably like in the 90s or something like that. And in this movie... This dude named uh, Mr. Clark, he was a teacher, or a principal rather. And he got assigned to work at like the worst school in the city. So it's a high school, and it's a terrible school. Kids are flunking out. Teachers don't want to work there anymore. Nobody's showing up to school. This is a terrible school. All these bad kids. So at the, when Mr. Clark first gets his job, what he does is he calls an assembly. He calls all the students in the school to come into the auditorium. And then he got a list of all the baddest kids in school, the ones with all the detentions, suspensions, who don't do their work, who don't show up to class, the ones that the teacher said are problem children. He got, he got a list of all those kids, and he had all those kids standing on the stage in the auditorium. So before the assembly begins, all the, the good kids are sitting in the crowds, just sitting there, and all the bad kids are up on stage, you know, being bad. That's what they do, being bad. That's why they were on the stage. So Mr. Clark comes in the auditorium, and he says, are we going to have a change around here at this school? And this is what the change is. All these kids you see on stage behind you, uh, behind me, 
They have been disruptive. They are not letting you learn. They are uh, starting fights. They're not coming to class. They're bringing down the average of the school. They're making the teachers not want to like their jobs. They're just overall destroying the community of this school, these kids up here. And the kids, they're hearing this, and they're like laughing and hamming it up because they are the bad kids. They know that they're bad, and they took, take pride in being bad. And this, then, this is what Mr. Clark says. He says, from this point forward, as of this very moment, all of these kids you see on stage behind me, they are all expelled from this school. He kicked all of them out of school right there on the spot. He said, all of y'all are expelled. Y'all don't go here anymore. Get out. And he kicked all of them out. <laughs> and then the whole, that's how the movie began. And then the rest of the movie is a whole process that goes on. Y'all can go look up the movie. It's called Lean On Me. I forget the name of the dude who played the principal. He's a well-known actor. But anyway, what is the point of me telling you that? This is what black people need to do with the bad apples in our community. Those who are not bringing the community up. Those who are not helping people get better. Those who are destroying rather than building. Those who are not doing anything, not even for themselves, let alone for anybody else. We got to get rid of them. This is what every other community does. The Jewish community, if somebody's an idiot and bringing the community down, they get rid of them. In the Latin community, they get rid of you. In the white community, they get rid of you. In every other community, the Asian community, they get rid of any idiots, any assholes, anyone who's destroying the community. They get rid of you. They don't wait for the cops to come around. They don't just let you destroy and don't do nothing. They get rid of you. When they notice that you're bringing the community down, somebody in the community will come check you and let you know, like, yo, you can't hustle on this block. Like, yo, you can't be throwing your trash on the ground in this playground. Like, yo, you can't be messing with the, the kids around here. Like, yo, don't be driving through here. Uh, blast the music like that. They will let you know that somebody in the community will come check you. So when people talk about community policing, defund the police, no, we don't need to defund the police. But in the communities that are growing and building and there are people in there doing stuff for self, they will check you if you come around fucking around in the community. All right, if you live in a neighborhood right now, if you, was in, if you go outside in your neighborhood right now, you throw trash on the ground, you pissing on the stairs somewhere, you see people selling drugs and nobody's saying nothing, all right, that kind of community ain't the kind of community that's going to grow. In certain communities, you throw something on the trash, somebody's going to step to you who, who lives there. Somebody who lives there is going to come outside like, yo, what, is you, what you doing? You can't throw trash on the ground. Not around here you can't. And they're going to deal with you directly. Forget the cops. So we need to start policing ourselves as a black community the same way that people in communities that care about their environment, same way that they're doing. All that being said, this is my plan for black America. So would you vote for me? <laughs> Can I ask for your vote on November 3rd? This is my plan for, black, for the black community. The world by Jess, I appreciate you. You understand exactly what I'm saying. In Dominican communities, elders, check destructive people, exactly. In every community that is growing and is about something, you get checked by the people who live there. Yeah, they ain't gotta call the cops. They don't have to put it on social media. They will check you directly and somebody's gonna step to you if you bring the community down. That's just the way the game goes in any growing community. Now in a community that's falling apart, we take the, the idiots who are actually bringing the community down and then we go support them. Then we go put their names on t-shirts and we go you know, walk out of basketball games because something happened to them. Like, yo, what were they doing to build the community up before that happened? What was their resume before that? Uh, they ain't got none. They weren't doing anything positive before that. Doesn't mean what happened to them should have happened, but if they're not building the community up, how are we stopping all of our lives to celebrate and defend and you know, put on our Superman capes to defend somebody who was already tearing the community down before that even happened. That makes no sense. But again, our community is the only one doing it. So it does make no sense because no other community would do this. There's no other community in the country that does this except black people. Why that's happening, there are many more reasons. That's a much longer conversation. All that being said, I'm going to recap my points in a second. So if you got a question about what I just said, you can go ahead and post it in the comments section. I see I got a couple comments I'm going to get to. First, I'm going to tell you about this book right here, and then I'm going to recap my points, and I'm going to answer questions, then we'll be done. This book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation, The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. I want you to have this book, so I made it free. The only thing you got to do to get it is go to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is already paid for. All you do is cover the shipping. That's mirrorofmotivation.com. Now, let me tell you why you want this book. I already told you one reason why. It's because it's free, but let me give you a better reason, because just getting it is one thing, reading is another. The reason why you want this book is everyone who's listening to me right now, you have goals. You have things you want to achieve in life. And I'm going to assume that you're willing to do the work. You're willing to put the effort in to get the things that you want in life. Here's the challenge, though. Even though you're doing all the right things, you have goals and you're working hard, you're showing up every day, you're hustling, you're grinding, you're a team, no sleep, whatever. You're still not getting the results that you want and you're wondering what the hell the problem is. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with your plan? Is it just bad luck? 
Is it oppression? Is something stopping you from achieving in life? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. It's none of those things. The problem is you never ask yourself this question. Who do I need to be? What type of person do I need to be? What kind of energy do I need to have? How do I need to walk into a room? What do I want people to feel when they come across me? What do I want the conversation to be about me behind my back? How do I want to feel about myself when I look in the mirror? Who do I need to be? This is the key question that most people never ask themselves in life. And this is why, despite all of your best efforts, you still do not get the results that you want. But I'm going to solve all of that with this book right here. This book is 166, 166 pages. Where I'm going to give you the framework for you to answer the question, who do I need to be? Where you'll be able to answer it for yourself, to yourself, anytime that you need to. That's why it's called the mirror of motivation. This book is not a hype up. This is not me hyping you up. This is not some motivational speaker giving you a motivational pep talk <clears throat> Excuse me, every morning. This is you with the framework for you to do it for yourself because I won't always be around. You two won't always be around, but you will always be around. Wherever you go, there you are. That's why you want this book. The subtitle is The Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. That's the first step. Discipline builds confidence. When you have discipline and confidence, you can still face setbacks. You need mental toughness. And to get all of this stuff working, you need personal initiative. Those four principles, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative, is what makes up this whole work on your game philosophy. You can get this book by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is already paid for. The book is free. All you do is cover a small shipping charge, and you go to mirrorofmotivation.com. On this page, I'm going to offer you the four book bulletproof bundle. And on the very next page, I'll offer, make you an offer to get this book, Work on Your Game, and my book called The Mental Workbook, which will give you a framework for implementing this. But you don't need to even think about all that. All you got to do is go to mirrorofmotivation.com. The book is already paid for. You cover the shipping. The self-guide to self-discipline. If you're ready for that, for being the person that you need to be, go to mirrorofmotivation.com as soon as this live stream is over. Or you can just go there right now and forget everything that, that I'm about to talk about. I'm going to give you my plan real quick. I'm going to recap my points, my plan for 2020 election if I was running for president. And then I'm going to answer every question. So if there's a question, go ahead and post it in the comments right now. I'm going to address everything. Number one, vote for whoever you want because neither one of these old white men has a plan for black people. Obama was young and black. He didn't have a plan for black people. So obviously the president is not the key to what black people need. Number two, JFK, 1961. He said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Black people. Ask not what a politician is going to do for black people, but ask what you, you personally, are doing to uplift the black community. If you can't answer the question, then you are the problem. Not Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, not the system, not racism, not 400 years of slavery. You are the problem because you ain't doing nothing to help the community, but you're taking up space and you're breathing all the air. This is why I do not fuck with Black Lives Matter because they only show up. When there's a white person to blame, they never hold black people accountable. The only way black people will rise up is when we start holding ourselves accountable, not when we start talking about what white people need to do. We've been doing that for hundreds of years, what white people need to do for black people. That shit has not changed anything. So obviously that is not the problem. Point number three, make the game easier for those who are building the community. The reason why Donald Trump pays $750 in taxes, allegedly, and the reason why entrepreneurs and people who make a lot of money through owning businesses pay less in taxes is because the government gives them tax breaks because the government likes people who build the community that build the economy by creating jobs black people need to do the same thing and start building up people who are either creating jobs for black people or making black people more hireable by helping them build human capital skills knowledge expertise talent discipline confidence personal initiative these are all human capital they are abilities and skills that make a human person more valuable these are the people we need to build up in our community and stop stopping our whole lives and you know doing marches and kneeling for people who are already tearing the community down before they met an unlucky fate or they weren't doing anything to help the black community anyway so what the hell are we celebrating them for point number four we need a system of relegation we need to evict Anybody who is not building the community up the same way Mr. Clark did and lean on me. He took all the bad kids in the school when he first got the job. He was the principal. He took all the bad kids in the school. And he kicked all of them out. Addition by subtraction. Getting rid of the people who are hurting the community. Now we can focus on the people who can possibly help and we can start building things up. You can't build a garden if you don't get rid of the weeds. All right. So that's the first step. All that being said, let us do what we got to do to build the community. Now. I'm going to address every question that we got in the comment section. So if you got one, I'll go ahead and address it. Over on Facebook, Aaron said, no one wants the accountability. As long as you put it on someone else, you always have someone else to blame. That is correct. And another question is, are, am I proactive in building the black community? Uh, what the hell have you been listening to for the last hour, Aaron? What have I been doing? What do I do every single day? 
even if you don't know nothing else that I do, if you follow these live streams, all right, is this not building a community? Am I not giving people some food? This ain't love and hip hop. I'm giving you some, I'm giving everybody here some games so you can get better. Gord GBA, what's good? Alan Rod Rodriguez, what's good? Alan said, well, I post this on YouTube. Yes. Alan said, they won't do shit for people. The rich get richer, the poor will get poorer. It's not because of the government, though, Alan. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer because of people's mentality. It's not because of the government. I just want to make sure we're clarifying that. I don't blame the government. Tommy Tran, I appreciate you. Alan said, if a white person would say it, they'd be pinned as racist. Oh, that's absolute fact. Well, we already know that. We see that, we see that every day. <laughs> I can say these things. If you're anybody who's white, don't say anything that I just said here today. Do not repeat anything that I just said. All right, unless you want to be, unless you want to get dragged on social media. Uh, Safe said, could I send the link to my book page? As I told you, mirrorofmotivation.com. You can remember that. Safeboy04. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Everybody knows that link. <laughs> I say it every day. Tommy said, great live. I wish more people talked like you because you actually speak with logic. Well, logic doesn't sell on social media, Tommy. <laughs> you can't be too smart on social media. It'll go over people's heads. That's the, that's the problem with logic on social media. Safe boy. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Get that book first. We're going to make you an offer. Listen, if you take every offer we make you when you go to this page, you'll walk away with eight books. Mirrorofmotivation.com. That's the only thing you need to know for right now. Mozart said, black people ain't signing up for that class. Well, you probably right. Well, some of them will. Not all of them, but some of them. Saleh said, what advice would you tell your 20-year-old self as an athlete? Listen to my master class at Work On Your Game University. Work on your game, you com. You can sign up for that master class while it's available because we actually about to stop offering that very soon. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep creating the master class, but we're gonna make a new setup to where you can't get it through the game group. We're gonna create something else. So if you want to get in, you better get in now. Because I guarantee you the price is going up by the end of October. By Halloween, the price of the daily master class will have gone up significantly. Mark my words. Tommy Tran said, Will you be voting this year? As of right now, I'm undecided. If, I, if I'm undecided on election day, I ain't voting for nobody. Am I watching the game tonight? Yes. I'll make a review of the game. I'm going to do a review of every game of the finals this year. So let me see if we got anything on Periscope. What's good on Periscope? Those checking in. C. Bui Kai. I don't know how to pronounce that, that your screen name there, but hello to you too. I appreciate that. The World by Jess said, bad apples ruin a bunch. That's a fact. In the Dominican communities, our elders check the destructive people. That's a fact also. NDS voting said, what do you need to see in order to vote? I don't need to see anything. My, my vote is for myself. I don't really care. As I said at the top of this live, I don't care if Trump or Biden wins. I mean, Biden's going to win Miami. I live in Miami. He's going to win this county. I don't know if he's going to win the state, but he's going to win Miami-Dade easily. Miami-Dade has been Democrat forever. He's going to win this. I don't know if he's going to win the state of Florida. Though. Florida's going to be tough. So how, how much is the master class? Go to workonyourgameu.com and look up the information. You can just read it right there on that page. Everything's on there. So everybody, mirrorofmotivation.com, self-guide to self-discipline. This is where you get started. As I told you, if you want to hear my daily master class, if you like what I just did, understand I do a master class every single day, not these lives. I'm talking about an audio master class. You can get it sent straight to your phone, but it is exclusive. You can get a preview by going to Apple, Spotify, you no know, SoundCloud, all of those. We put it out every single day. Every day, we got over 1,600 master classes there. If you like my style, you like the way I teach, you like the way I keep it real, the way I build my arguments with logic and rationality, I've done this over 1,600 days in a fucking row since 2016. Again, you can look that up at workonyourgameu.com. But I'm telling everybody who is listening right now, by this time next month, that offer will not be that offer will no longer exist we are creating something brand new and the price is going up so if you want to take advantage you better take advantage now because once it's gone it is gone you will never be able to sign up for that ever again again i said work on your game you.com in the month of october that thing is going away trust me sports says other communities tell people to not mess with kids like bully them no sports however you got to watch the replay i didn't say anything like that you missed the context. I didn't say, I don't know where you got that from. I did not say that. Mirrorofmotivation.com, everybody. That's that. I'm doing another live tomorrow. I don't know what the topic is. You'll see. Stay tuned. Work on your fucking game. We out of here. Dre, all day.